Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Fan Levitard Show. I'm Ty. That's Nathan. Brian is off doing another job. Uh, do Nathan? Do Wait a second. Dare There's name? a third person on this podcast, and they skipped the Mark Hockman night. We're yeah. getting to you, Mark. <laughs> Shunned. You stay still. Uh, I, I just want to. I just want to shout out Ruffles. You hired a fantastic voice actor. But fuck you for taking our third wheel. Anyway, <laughs> we have a guest today, a Miami radio legend. I feel like that's not an overstatement whatsoever. Mark Hawkman in the building. Hawk, ladies okay. and gentlemen, welcome into oh. the Fan Love Show. How you doing? Thank Hawk? you so much. With that kind of introduction, you just won me over. I am easily, uh, am easily impressed if you talk about me in, in very glowing terms. Before we get into some hard hitting action here, what is your favorite potato chip? And don't say ruffles. Hmm. My favorite potato chip. Like, should I go like, like unique potato chip? It, what, whatever you I like munchos. You ever had munchos? Mm -hmm. never, never had a munchos. What? What's going on here? You've never had munchos? Mm -mm. is that is that like a national brand is that a local yeah yeah that? yeah it's like a discount though it's like like it's one of those few potato chips or or brands that actually has the price printed right on the bag so like the the grocery store can't even change it because it's a, it's right there on the bag but yeah get oh, so it's shows. the arizona iced tea of, of potato exactly chips. it's exactly right that's exactly Love right that. i like uh can, it does it have to be a potato chip or can it be just a salty snack uh cheetos to me is like the uh the preeminent yeah. That's fair. I'll, I'll give you Cheetos. You have an animal behind you? I do, yeah. I have a cat right. cuddled up on top of my blanket something. there. Right I above. do see these munchos. I've seen them now, but I have, I've never... Oh, the best. Honestly, I've never felt desperate enough in need for chips that, you know, I would, I would go to the munchos. I right. Do. Well, sometimes you've got to get off your high horse, Nathan, and <laughs> live like the rest of us. Um, I mean, I... I like I don't like to cut corners when it comes to my chips. So <laughs> well, that that's the amazing thing about the Muncho is that it's so good and uh, and so affordable. Hmm. Hawk is the is the Muncho a triangular chip like a Dorito? No, it's it not. Like it's bowl? a uh, it's a potato chip. It's a it's a potato crisp, if you will. Um, it's very airy, and uh, I'm telling you, I'm changing your lives here right now on the Fan Levitard podcast. I'm changing your lives. I'm telling you, get yourself uh, a uh, a bag of munchos. I believe it's less than the cost of one month of Mark Hockman's Super Follows. It, it is. It is. And you'll get uh, almost as much enjoyment out of it. Packed with potato yeah. flavor, which is what I love yeah. to get out of my chips. That's what it's a That's crispy right. crunch. It's, it's a one-two combination. Yeah. Mm. Are these bad boys ridged for your pleasure? They are not ridged. No. Oh, see, I, I like a ridged potato chip. I don't no, like a flat I do chip. not. I do not. I am not a fan. The only time a ridged potato chip is good is if you have French onion dip. Mm. Otherwise, ridged potato chips, it's uh, like it's a little cutesy. Oh, I got it. You know, whatever. It, like It's the a little cutesy. We got to make ridges in it. You know. Well, folks, you heard it here first. Mark Hockman, anti- ridged potato chips speaking Man. of hearing things nathan i think you have a little game for us to play what? in honor of our guest i do have a little game here that's called did you hear it's time for did you hear Is that the ruffle and levitard show exclusive <laughs> Wow. All right, so we we've never played this game before, and I guess I'm not sure how we begin. Um, should I start, Nathan? Should it's you like, start? Should what do you mean? Our... This is an exclusive tie. We play this game all the time. Well, you that, want me to go remember? first? I mean, I think we. I, I feel like we should let our guests go first. Me first. But then, but then Nathan first, though. Me if though. He's familiar with the game, I guess. I'm it not familiar exclusive. with the game, but I'm very good at uh, context clues. It's what makes me that Miami radio legend. All right, so maybe, so maybe then I go first. Me first. And, and, yeah, you first. All right, me first. Was it? What do I do? What's it called again? Did you hear? Did you hear? Consummate radio professional. Did you hear? <laughs> I gotta come up with something. 
Ooh. I like the what? bed. That was very video. Oh my god, you even <laughs> channeled the the eight bit audio. I love yeah, that. Yeah, like the uh, I think it was the Galaga. Galaga. Oh my song. god, that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't did know you where hear you that found bed? That, that bed, but it slapped back in the day. It really oh did. God. People didn't have access to everything the way you do now, so it was like, whoa, what is that? Um, did you hear? And I can't go back to the potato yeah. chip well, right? No. A lot of sporting like events like... happening over the weekend. Mm. Any number of societal issues going did on? You... <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm going. Uh, did you hear that Barry Manilow is performing in Fort Lauderdale Sunrise at the FLA Live Arena on January 14th? Wow. And if you, I, I, I may be not certain I remember how to play this game properly, but if you've <laughs> never seen Barry Manilow, you should go see him. He's 79 years old, and it's like watching a marionette out there at this point, but you should see Barry Manilow at least once. I've heard him, never seen him. Mm, such a great show. It's, uh, I've probably seen Manilow 10 times in my lifetime. And the, uh, I remember it was like, Seven, eight years ago, he played Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And the literal name of the tour was the Farewell Tour. And then at the end of the, the concert, he goes, I'll see you next year, Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> and I looked at my friend, who was Fake Howard, by the way, Fake Howard and his wife. Yeah. And I said, did he just say, I'll see you next year? Because we bought tickets for the Farewell Tour. And then, like, every year, he says farewell. Anyway, did you hear... Barry Manilow is coming to concert, coming in concert to FLA Live Arena, January 14th. Ty! Did you hear that Brian, our man on the streets who is not here for this wonderful episode, is already loud wrong about Josh Allen, who he said would not throw 30 touchdowns this year in what has been dubbed a freezing cold take Hall of Fame rant. Wow. Nathan. Did you guys hear uh, Mountain Dew's new seasonal flavor? No. What is it? I don't think so. Uh, fruit Quake. Oh, it is supposed that. to be a soda that tastes like fruit cake, which is one, who's asking for it? And two, it says on the box, the flavor is artificially blasted in as if you could naturally blast <laughs> in the flavor of a fruit cake to a soda. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed in Mountain Dew. This is the soda of my childhood. And I just wanted to take this moment in our exclusive game that's sweeping the nation to say, I've, I've heard of your new seasonal flavor Mountain Dew and you should be ashamed. I remember when Code Red first came out, I was like, okay, that's fine. That's you know, everybody, flavor. everybody deserves to have some variety. But now I don't even, I don't even know what Mountain Dew is. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings the other night. They have Mountain Dew Legend there. I tried to get a legendary Long Island iced tea, but I guess they were missing an ingredient and I couldn't even get that. So yeah, I'm just, did you hear I'm disappointed in Mountain Dew? Stugat, you, you, I mean, you did two different names for the, the segment. You hijacked the segment. You just started rambling on. Like, it's quick. It's in and out. Like you, <laughs> I don't know, you went on a whole monologue. Somehow you ended up at Buffalo Wild Wings. I, what, what are we doing here? Also, we're alienating food know. sponsors at an alarming rate. At this point. Robot! <laughs> for old time's sake. Mm. Do you have a robot, Hawk? No, I do not. <laughs> That requires, a lot of, that requires a lot of production. And that was a fan Lebetard exclusive. That's whoa, right, whoa, folks. Whoa, 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 the... whoa, 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 whoa. I got a lot of did you hears. Another one? I've got so many. I didn't know how, how prepared to be. I've got a lot. <laughs> well, I only had that one. I barely had <laughs> I, that one. I just had the one. You know, I don't, I think from the game, like we'd have to go on to, a, we'd have to invent a whole nother segment. Like I've got news or, you know, I'm embarrassed something to say this, yeah, but I'm embarrassed, but so I think, you know, for the fan Levitard show, the fastest growing Dan Levitard show fan <laughs> YouTube channel. That's facts. That's, that's going to have to be the end of this amazing segment. You guys do. On the podcast, and I apologize for not having listened. Do you uh, do you do sports talk? I heard the Josh Allen take in there, or is it mostly Lebetard related stuff? Like, what's the uh... so much sports talk? I mean, 
forgive Brian for his awful Josh Allen take. Ty, week yeah. one said Geno Smith was going to be top 10 quarterback. Congratulations, Did he really? Ty. This yeah. fucking guy right here. I, I must have bet against him six Galaxy weeks brain. in a row saying this guy is the worst and what are they doing? And it, it took me a, took me way too long to figure out that he was actually having a great season. Mm -hmm. so and me, half, week Sarah one. I didn't write the haters back. <laughs> Week one, I told you the Packers were trash and they were going to finish in the bottom half of their division. And what do you know? That's where they're at that. right now. Look at that. And we'll, we'll see how they do this weekend next Sunday against the uh, Dolphins coming up. Big game, three game skid. And I know you said on uh, your show, going back to the Chargers, that Justin Herbert ate to his lunch. He did. And I like to think outside the box, right? Josh Allen, he didn't need to his lunch, but he maybe had a snack, maybe took part of it. And I'm wondering as a dolphin expert, like, again, I'm thinking outside the box here. Mike McDaniels needs to make Tua a better lunch. So he doesn't let people eat it. He clearly doesn't want his lunch enough. So what would you make Tua for lunch this Sunday to ensure that Aaron Rodgers does not eat his lunch? It's a great question i'll be using that on the air because i did say <laughs> yes. ate his lunch a number yeah. of times so this is a great mm -hmm. way to actually get into food talk through this little tiny narrow alleyway mm -hmm. of sports so if i'm mike mcdaniel what am i making to uh for lunch yeah so that his lunch doesn't get eaten so now you're saying so he so this is a, what i'm a saying crappy lunch he did. Yeah. yeah he obviously didn't lunch. want his lunch. I'm thinking McDaniels thinking. Are you about sure the that he didn't want his lunch or that he had made such a good lunch that Justin Herbert stole Ooh. and ate it? So in other words, the question wow. you're asking me is what's a shitty lunch or what's a good lunch? <laughs> See, I'm I, saying, I, I understood that as the, as the latter, that, that his lunch was so good that right. it got stolen from him. So he needs a terrible lunch that no one will want to steal. Right. I think that's the, uh, so, so now I got to think like what, what do people love? That's how you flesh out a segment. What do oh, people yeah. love? That's how you flesh out a tweet that's going to annoy people. <laughs> what do people love that you don't in the food realm? Right? Mm, what does everybody okay. what does everybody rave about that you don't you don't understand? Like you don't get it. Um, what is something that is universally hated even? That no, no, what's something that's up. universally wait, wait. loved that you what? don't like, i.e. stuffed crust pizza? Okay. Nobody really Go likes on. that, right? Nobody likes that. I, I mean, who really needs the, the crust stuffed with cheese? What Everyone's, you, oh, it's going to be stuffed crust pizza, stuffed crust pizza. And who gives a shit? What, uh, mm -hmm. what is hot? Hot, pardon, pardon me. Um, very happy to have you on here. But what the happy fuck to be are you here. talking about? Nobody likes stuffed crust pizza. What? Everybody thinks they like stuffed crust pizza. This guy. But knows. you oh, Concur. I'll tell you what it is. I've done this bit on the radio for a million years, but it really is the truth. Like it's not shtick. Sweet potato fries. You got me there. I yep. Because here's the thing: everybody thinks, oh, I, I'm gonna be healthy. I'm gonna order sweet potato fries. Like for whatever reason, people feel like that's healthier than a French fried russet potato or whatever type of potato it is. And it's not, it's just a deep fried potato and they don't really even taste good. The first thing that happens when you eat a sweet potato fry, the first thing, I don't care who you are. First thing that happens, you go, man, I wish I had ordered the regular fries. <laughs> the first thing that goes through your head and then they try to make it taste better. They go, Oh, here's some marshmallow sauce. Huh? Marshmallow mm -hmm. sauce? What the fuck? Yeah, they give you marshmallow yeah. sauce with sweet potato like a, Or like a maple mayo aioli, yeah, yeah. right? It's like, like, oh. like what, what are we doing here? What mm -hmm. are we doing? Either either it stands on its own or it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, if if you wanted, uh, what could Mike McDaniel make for Tua? I do So want that, that Aaron Rodgers doesn't eat his lunch. Mm -hmm. Sweet potato fries. Aaron Rodgers, vaccinated you gotta, you gotta, sweet you potato consider, fries. You've got to consider Aaron Rodgers has a little hipster vibe to him. So he might purposefully go the opposite direction. If some right. people don't like something, he might try to like it. Right. Like he's the guy that'll eat just the stuffed crust and leave the pizza. And they, okay, you know, we, like, oh. we, we, we need to pump the brakes and have this, this stuffed crust debate. What do you, Why, you like what it? Is, what is not to love about crust 
stuffed with more cheese. Because you're, getting the, you're getting the cheese, you're the getting cheese the cheese now. on the pizza. You're getting the cheese on the pizza, and it's a much better cheese, and it's you a much better cheese. flavor. And it's nah, you, you really don't. That's where they do. have you. There's there's a few things where you get hypnotized, you know, yeah. by like I don't know how much they upcharge you for the stuffed crust pizza, but trust me, you're not like if it's what is it three dollars more? Oh, it's and you probably, probably get like four dollars extra, and you probably yeah. get four cents worth of cheese. Here's the craziest thing, in in uh, my opinion, um, I keep watching the Panthers game. That's why I keep uh, going on. <laughs> um, they're losing three nothing to the Bruins mm, in the first period. Ouch. But I don't know when this podcast is airing, so it's already happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but they they uh, they put a lemon on your water glass, and this is a great fraud that has been perpetrated on restaurants by the lemon industry for years now. Right? Mm-hmm. Nobody lemon. bought lemons. Right? The only reason that you bought lemons was to make a lemon meringue pie, or lemonade. and then people stop making or lemonade. But how many lemons do you really need in lemonade? You just need sugar. <laughs> Not a lot. Right. So people stopped making lemon meringue pie in like 1961. Like nobody, have you ever had lemon meringue pie? A long time ago, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had it. But the lemon farmers got together and they go, we got to sell these lemons. Like what, like what? So they went to restaurants and they said, everyone wants lemon on their glass. And all of a sudden you're in 2022 or 2023. I don't know when this is going to air again. Um, Still a current year. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, all of a sudden, they're selling lemons hand over fist. And nobody gives a shit about the lemon on the glass. Mm-hmm. No one has ever returned a glass of water and said, you know what? There was no lemon on this. I'd, I'd like a new one. I take the lemon right off. I put it on the side. It's a complete waste of money. Yet the, the lemon farmers, the lemon mm. lobby... Wow. Created a market for lemons. And what am I talking about? Lemons. You know, and you don't see it. You don't see it in Europe either. You know, it's a it's a distinctly American thing. And I don't think we talk enough about the lemon barons and the ways they control our society. It's a it's a really yeah, and media. It's a it's a really barons. Great point. And, you know, for a while there, the media, and I'm sure Big Lemon was behind this too, Always. used to try us to get us to buy into these TV shows like Cupcake Wars. And famously, we know how you feel about cupcakes, which is anti, against, poor way of getting frosting, right? Very poor, right? Well, I myself, I, go ahead. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, I, I believe a cupcake is made solely as a frosting delivery system, mm-hmm. right? You're not eating yeah. it without frosting. They don't sell cupcakes without frosting. Some people, you know, they tell, oh, that's a muffin. Eh, it's not. It's a completely different thing. A muffin is made out of muffin mix and mm-hmm. a cupcake's made out of cupcake mix. Yeah. Uh, but the, it's a frosting delivery system. But, and I'm not talking about the little mini cupcakes. I'm talking about a big fro- a big cupcake. You can't eat it without getting it in your eyes and your nose. And it's very Mm -hmm. cute when you're six years old. But as an adult, to be eating a cupcake, the only way to really eat it would be to eat it with a fork and knife, which is stupid. And Ty, if you say cut the stump in half, put one side, one on top of the other and make a sandwich. (laughs) uh, We're not I'm not in cake. Mm -mm. I just want a dessert. I just want some frosting. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not reformulating. I got to repackage, you know, what you're giving me, like just serve it to me the way you want it served. Uh, Cupcakes to me, I don't don't understand any adult that would eat a regular size cupcake. The worst wars, by the way. I didn't even know they had a cupcake wars. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're having this discussion because this was one of my did you hears. Hawk, you are correct about this. Just have a sheet cake if you want cake. A sheet cake is... It's it's almost like the perfect dessert. Perfect, perfect, it's, it's perfect. Because a layer a cake, bite of a donut, sometimes can get too big. A layer cake, they get a little yeah. silly sometimes, right? With the layer, oh, bit. it's an eight layer cake. It's a twelve layer. Eh, it's enough already. It's silly. Mm-hmm. You wonder what's a scam, actually, Hawk. Speaking of cake, the the notion of freezing your wedding cake to eat a year later mm. that is bullshit because. I don't know if you've ever had wedding cake a year after it's been frozen, but it tastes 
horrible. Right. I think that's more for the tradition of something. I, it's a waste I, of cake. It's a waste of cake. I don't. I don't care about the tradition. It's a waste of cake. It you is a waste of cake. All this money that for I, a I can't argue good with that. Cake. Right. You pay all this money for a perfectly good cake. All this money for a perfectly nice wedding that you're going to enjoy that night. Don't make me eat freezer burnt cake. A year later, because I'm just going to be reminded. Oh, I wish I would have eaten this on the day itself. What is Nathan eating right now? Um, this here. <laughs> this is a. Uh, Inside Mata, hmm? Filipino. It's it's like a cupcake, but as you can see, frosting is just going in my mouth. What is it? Not on my face. Inside Mata. It's never uh, heard of that. it's kind of like a Hawaiian roll with can a. Can you hold cream. that up to the camera? It looks like a donut. This is there. a maple bacon one, but uh, traditionally, actually, traditionally these are kind of weird. Traditionally, it's like sweet bread a kind of buttercream frosting and then it's usually topped with cheese are you being cutesy here or is no, this something that you have in the minima house my wife is filipino so hmm. and i, I am him. dutch so our kids are like little mini eric spoolstras oh, i'm a big fan of the dutch i love aruba mm -hmm. you know, Nathan, a I have an assignment for you really quick i need you to go and get another one of those but like a whole one because we only saw like this quarter chunk it's a great what call, you had huh? Good call. Good call. Oh my God. Just have, have them around. Here. That looks like yeah. a donut to me. Am Hold I it wrong? up again. What's it called? Insimata. Insimata. Hmm. Oh, unwrapping. Oh, yeah. Give us some answers. That one's my wife's, though, it. fellas. That's a mocha. So where, did, where did you get that? I got it in Santa Clarita, about 45 minutes away. Oh, where are you? My, where do you live? I'm in the city of Lancaster, California, Never which is LA it. County. So I just tell people LA area. Gotcha. Yeah, like now, the in and out for 45 burger? minutes specifically for that. No, um, it is right next door to my son's pediatrician. So pediatrician appointment, pick up a couple inside matas to keep the wife happy because huh. I'm podcasting. She's watching the kids. So win-win the kid you know walked in while you were doing the podcast yeah. here yeah mm -hmm. it was actually Rabbed kind him. of horror, horror movie-ish you just saw like the slow <laughs> head popping over it reminded me of the grudge <laughs> where are you ty where do you live i am in the colonial capital of the united states williamsburg virginia wow and how yeah. did you two uh become friendly through the levitard show uh uh family yeah. Nathan is my guardian angel. You know, I, I started this podcast solo and had a good run. And then, you know, I thought I hit what was my brick wall. And then from the heavens, like manna, descended Nathan, who was like, hey, you need some help. And he's taking this thing and he's running with it. He might as well be the host of the podcast wow. at this point, if we're being honest with ourselves. Like he's done way more work on this thing over the past year than I have. So. What, what do you guys do in real life? I'm a teacher, fourth grade. Hmm. You like that? And, and I work. Mm -hmm. I like that. I have three weeks off now. So <laughs> that's uh, a, really I always, nice. I always, uh, I, I would like to be a teacher. I always thought I would, uh, I would enjoy that. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you do, Ty? I work for Sheets and Giggles, sponsor of this podcast. Oh, do you really work for them? Folks, let me tell you a little something about Sheets and Giggles. It is the holidays. And I know what you're thinking, Ty. Why are you telling me to buy Sheets and Giggles right now? It's too late. Christmas is fast approaching. The holidays are fast approaching. But let me tell you, folks, you know what gift doesn't take any time to deliver, any time to ship? A Sheets and Giggles gift card. That's why you need to go to SheetsGiggles.com. Go buy yourself some gift cards. Give the gift of sleep to you, your loved ones, your enemies. Maybe they won't be your enemies once they get some better sleep. SheetsGiggles.com. Yes. I'm really, really suggesting giving uh, hmm. gifts to your enemies. Yeah, I absolutely think you should give hmm. gifts to your enemies, especially the gift of sleep, because they're probably your enemy because they're grouchy because they're not sleeping well. They're sleeping on shitty cotton sheets. So what, what do you what do you do for sheets and giggles? I do marketing. You know, so um, Colin, the owner, yeah. uh, he, he had once, uh, you know, there was the back and forth. He follows me on Twitter and, and whatever. And I can't remember exactly what it was. This is probably a year ago. I'm going to give you a little endorsement for Sheets and Giggles. Okay. So he he said, you know, oh, if you send me this or or I, I can't remember what tra what transpired, but I was like, do I get free sheets out of it? And he said, absolutely. What do you want? I said, oh, I'll take a, a you know 
uh, what do you call them? A thing of sheets. So I said, oh, okay, I'll take a thing of sheets. And uh, they're so good. My right hand to God. They're so good that I decided I need to get them for my son. And I didn't even DM Colin. You know, I only know him through Twitter. Uh, I didn't even DM him and try to use the, the old Levitard show card. I just mm -hmm. went on the website and bought them like a regular human being. And so in my house, there's sheets and giggles sheets on the master bed and in my son's room and the pillowcases as well. And I am not, I'm not kidding you. The first night that my wife and I slept on them, I was, I, I said, you got to get these for David because this is the best sheet I've ever slept on. And that's a non-paid endorsement. I paid for the sheets. Well, I can tell you that this conversation, this video will make its way to the sheets and giggles <laughs> Twitter page because Colin runs that. So you will be uh, endorsing us even further, but I, I love hearing that. I actually just got back yesterday from a trip, seeing some family, and they did not have sheets and giggle sheets on their right. beds. And let me tell you, it was terrible sleeping on a non shiggles sheet. Terrible. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You know what makes the big difference is the eucalyptus. Oh, it's so good, I, and the lyocell fabric. I've seen, I've seen that on the the thing. They really do. They are, they are the best sheets and the best pillowcases that I have ever slept on my right hand to God, give all the money to Chris Cody. Cause I never yep. would have heard, uh, heard about it with Chris Cody. Uh, but yeah, they, they really are uh, good. No bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, Ty, if you have another loved one out there who loves watching sports, but likes to get a little bit more action on the game, how much do you think it cost to say, get them into like a gambling consortium how much do you think that would cost well nathan you know we're we're a bunch of high rollers here on the fan levitar podcast we we have zoom premium or whatever that shit is called yeah and we recently paid for google storage so i'm thinking you know you bad. gotta at least Hope drop like five hundred dollars to mm. get into gambling <laughs> wow ty what if i told you for less than a cup of coffee a month you could see the bets of a gambling consortium no by by super following Mark Hawkman. You oh my can God. See I mean, one, the, one hand yeah. washes the other here. <laughs> For just $2.99 a month. Tell me, Hawk, who do you like in the first half of the bad boy mowers pinstripe bowl? I mean, I know we're running a little That bad one's luck a no brainer that is Syracuse with a Rondé Gadsden the second. How dare you <laughs> even, uh, how dare you even uh, suggest it would be otherwise? But I will tell you this. Did you see what we bet on the old gambling consortium yesterday for the World Cup? Oh, let's see. I missed yesterday's mm. consortium output. I the last time I was I saw the the dreaded UAB halftime bet with the bad beat. That was a bad beat. Yesterday, I bet regulation World Cup regulation ends in a draw. Mm. And the over under over two and a half goals. Wow. I needed the first, I needed regulation, excuse me, to end two, two. What did regulation end at? Two, two. We cashed over a $4,000 ticket yesterday. Ooh. Oh, no. How many, and you're telling me you for, for two ninety nine a month for two ninety nine a month, you, you could have had that, that wager cat. and wow. you could have had that ticket. I mean, how many how many sheets could you get for that's for that kind load. of uh, 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 for for the forty two hundred bucks or whatever we cashed on that? I mean, that's a that's a lot of sheets right there, buddy. What you could have bought with forty two hundred bucks, you could have bought at least three eucalyptus mattresses now available at sheetsgiggles.com. <laughs> and let me tell you, folks, right now I've seen that. So they season, sell entire mattresses now. We sell whole ass mattresses, huh? and they're good. They're so good. We sell. We sell mattresses. We sell pillows. We sell coffee now. We sell coffee no, now. Really? Laundry detergent. They, right, we got you you're covered from AM to PM. Sheetsgiggles.com. We got it all right now. Promo code BOGOHO. That's B-O-G-O-H-O -O, for 50% off every other item on the entire fucking site. Sheetsgiggles.com. You don't really sell coffee though, do you? No, we, we really do. We, you we do? We partnered with a local roaster in Texas, and we sell coffee now. All right. Yeah. So an interest, it's a very interesting product extension. It's the only other reason to get out of bed besides being fired. Hmm. 
Do you think eucalyptus would make a good coffee filter? Uh, eucalyptus is it's an toxic excellent use when ingested of to the cup people, and the so drink. I'm saying no. As as like the the emphasis this is an excellent comedic device that you just used. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So did you guys listen to the Levitar show when I was on it? Or you just know who uh, my name from other people? You guys seem very young. How old do you so, think we are? Uh -huh. mm, Ty looks like uh, 28 to me. Oh, bless you. Nathan looks uh, 31. Bless you, Hawk. What a mensch. <laughs> How old are you guys? Well, 35. Play the, play, have 35. the fucking conversation. It's like with me and my kid. Like if I ask how school was, I'm not looking for good. It's just a conversation <laughs> starter. 35 over here. 31. Yeah. So. so did you listen to me on Levitar show or or you just know uh I have gone back through the archives and listened to You weren't it, a listener then. I was, no, I was introduced to Levitard's show since I'm out in California. I didn't know until you guys made it national. And then for- Well, you guys didn't. They guys the, did. <laughs> for the uh, first couple years, I still just listened in my car. I'd, I've been a podcast everyday listener since about- 2015 2016 somewhere in there what about you ty i discovered you off of a youtube mega clip that mm. someone put together that is an i gotta tell you yeah. compilation that's <laughs> three to four hours long and i've listened to the entire thing multiple times i can't get through the whole thing but people never send fails it to, me. to make me laugh yeah yeah those because it is it in chronological order it is in chronological order. Because you can, I mean, like it starts as a goofy bit. And by the end, I mean, Dan, like you start to see how much he really hates me at that point. Like, oh, yeah. It's not <laughs> a bit anymore. By like, it's it's a really good kind of scoped version of what happened over the course of however many years. It is. Let me tell you, the first time I listened to it in the robot was introduced i think i s did an actual spit take onto my <laughs> monitor at work because i was like what the fuck <laughs> right just a I'm terrible ridiculous. terrible voice affect that i would do through cool edit <laughs> which is now adobe audition <laughs> but yeah that was, <laughs> that was great then we used to have reggie the car wash guy on and sheila the mm -hmm. office manager take us back to those mm -hmm. 790 days what was it like working with those guys back then yeah it was great it was great we had fun i mean that was that was literally uh fun like just fun the show itself was fun it was you know as as the producer it was a little more difficult only because dan and i had been friends for so long before the show you know we were friends in college and so there was a weird dynamic which finally played itself out by the end but there was the weird dynamic of i, I got to you know it's the host of the show so you got to keep him happy and then, you know, by the end, it's like, a, 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 there's just a strange, remember Dan saying to me at the beginning, at the first incarnation of the show, like, hey, you know, all rock bands end up hating each other at the end. Oh, well, we'll be fine. Um, but it was fun as hell. Those, the, the, I can't remember if the show was three hours or four hours, but when we were on the air, man, those shows were magic. Like that, that was, that's some of the best times of my life. Mm-hmm. And now you're still changing the radio game, doing things like live radio from three different time zones. You got Crowder in Egypt, Solana for a segment in LA, you in Miami. I mean, really, are we are changing the game. We are changing yeah. AM radio. Whoever wrote the obituary for AM radio, <laughs> how dare you? Uh, we are not doing today. Never, never done before. You got to go for three continents now. You got the three All time right. zones, three continents now. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. Is What's Aruba, it to get you is that a different up? continent? What's it going to take for you to get posted up in like hmm. Antarctica? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if any <laughs> broadcast has ever happened from Antarctica. I don't know. That's a, it's an a excellent uh, stream of like one of these shitty bowl games. Will Sheets and Giggles sponsor our broadcast from Antarctica? I don't even want to speak that into existence because Colin <laughs> will fund the one way nah, expedition. I, would, I yeah, I would never do that. He's he's uh there's one thing I never do is like stuff that is associated with the Lebetard show. I would never try to hork in there and and uh and and bring it into our world. 
Well, no, that's very mm-hmm. that's very kind and and humble of you. Um, that's not humble. Ladies, ladies I would never win again, that battle. <laughs> this so, is this is the there's no humility Levitar involved show. there. That's just uh, that's just reality. So, Hawk, I guess my question is like from one radio guy to another. How much time do you have left in this industry? Like, how much more effort are you putting into this bad boy? Well, I'm putting no effort in if you listen to the radio <laughs> show. So that, uh, as long as as long as they'll have me, as long as they'll have me, I'll be there. As long as the checks keep clearing. As long as the checks keep clearing, I'll be there. I the the show that I do now, uh, me and Crowder and Solana. In, in all honesty, like. Kid wants his cupcake. Dad stole his cupcake and <laughs> he, he wants his Filipino cupcake. <laughs> Let's go. You're holding out on him. Um, yeah, I, the show that I do with Crowder and Solana, I, I mean, honestly, like cannot imagine having more fun than we do now. So mm-hmm. I would say the biggest danger now, because Crowder is just so popular with the Pivot podcast and everything that he does, the, the biggest danger would be him leaving the show. But um it is what it is Mm -hmm. recently you uh came down with a case of pneumonia i did but you did end up saying that it was a great time to have pneumonia because you were able to watch the world cup get in some wagers with the consortium that you maybe wouldn't have uh and i'm wondering if you have a top five times to get like when's the best time to get pneumonia obviously first of all World Wouldn't Cup's we want to do a Mount Rushmore list. instead of a yeah. top five? Ooh, there Shouldn't we go, we do Mount, a Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. I mean, to I give created... you time to fill, I can give you a Mount Rushmore of secret peas. Seek oh, like pneumonia. That's yeah, like good. pneumonia, right? I do gotcha. have a list of secret peas. If you need All some right. time to come up with your best times to get pneumonia, I would rather do secret peas. Okay. Okay. Do you have any secret peas? Well, I'm going to do it off the dome here, but if you're ready, I'm going to show you how uh, a great radio mind works. Let's see it. All right. Pneumonia. Obviously that's the jump off. Mm -hmm. Psoriasis. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Do you have that on your list? I don't. I I have. Well, wait, don't give Uh it. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Pneumonia. Psoriasis psychology I, that's on my list and of course the south korean artist best known for gangnam style psy okay good night everybody <laughs> glaring omission hawk you get back here there. you left out the best silent p probably ever in my opinion really but nathan you go you go to yours you me I have a couple outside looking in pseudo love a good pseudo Ooh, name. Nice. That's a good one. Um, right. But doesn't quite make the list. Psychology was also outside looking in, leave it to, you know, uh, educational area about the brain to just mess with your brain by spelling it with psychology. Mm. Um, but then on my Mount Rushmore, I have pneumonia was there. Sure. Obviously. Who was there? Love a good, coup oh love oh it. silent oh, p at the yeah. end wow. i know right you got to mix it up wow. love a good coup, that's right? well done that's, that's well done that's one that also it's probably embarrassed you at some point because you know i've definitely read and been like coop because coop mm. yeah. you're like i yeah. know but coop it'll sneak up on you me. that has not happened to me another favorite secret p the road trip secret p where you just pull over to the side of the road because you really got to go to the bathroom well done you, well done. You get out, you get out of your car and like no one knows. It's maybe late at night, no other cars see you. Boom, secret P accomplished. Mm. And my last one, pterodactyl. Thank you. Oh, Obviously, there that's it is. strong. Yeah, that's strong. This is there that's is. like pterodactyl has to be the first word that's introduced you to right. the secret P right. ability. Because, but I know a lot you know, of people who call it a pterodactyl. Yeah. No, you don't. Well, <laughs> You know, you're a kid and you're like, I love pterodactyls. And you're like, what? The word looks like that? Right, right. How is that possible? What do you got, Ty? So I have pneumonia, hmm. pterodactyl, psychosis, oh. and um, you know what? I like, I like Nathan's uh, 
No, you can't take someone else's. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. no I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to tweak it. There's like they always say anything. I didn't steal it. I tweaked it. I like his silent P. And so what I'm going to do is the silent P is the one I'm going to do right now because I really have to take a piss. So you guys keep going, <laughs> and I'm going to go pee real quick. Huh? That happens on podcasts. Wow. Yeah. You know, I was wondering, Mark, if you had to guess how much it would cost for someone to find out like what Dan rather thinks is like a douche or no douche. How much do you think that would cost for someone to find out? (laughs) I don't know. Is that something I put on the super? (laughs) Yes. That is one where I I I now know. Hey buddy. I have a whole big file of old douche or no douche uh, segments. They don't play that anymore. Correct? No, uh, they don't. That game they have. Yeah. That one's. Man, well, I think they stopped that originally because it was ESPN and they didn't want to play yeah. it, but I, they could now. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. they just don't. No, they, I think I did actually hear Dad. douche or no douche because they maybe played it a while ago. Where's what, buddy? The sticky thing that sticks on the tent. The sticky thing that sticks on the tent. I go ask mommy, maybe. Maybe she knows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, was who who out of that were you like the most floored that you got to actually play that game? Like Dan Rather's got to be. It was probably Dan Rather. Hold on, I'm yeah. Look at my computer here. On my, I mean, uh, files. When when you put that out to the Hawkamaniacs, I was like, yes, I must hear Dan Rather's, and he he played it like That's an expert. Being, he really being did. Silent. He was a very good radio. You knew what he thought. You knew what he thought, but he he didn't quite give you. The uh, he didn't take the bait, but he made it clear Let's what see. he felt about certain people in terms of being a douche or no douche. Douche or no douche. I'm looking at the entire file right now. Uh, Bob Einstein, may he rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Chip he was Jones. a good. He was a he was a great douche or no douche because he was very decisive. And he would give you Which makes it great. Like he would actually seem like he's thinking about it. He was always mm-hmm. uh, always playing the bit. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Jalen Rose, Joe Theismann, Kimbo Slice. May he rest in peace. Max Kellerman, Robert Smith, Sam Madison, Shane Carwin. Who is that? No clue. Shane Carwin. Tim Kirchin, Tim Legler. Dana White again, John Daly, or Kevin Eubanks. Who is Shane Carwin? Shane Carwin, Kevin heavyweight, Eubanks, heavyweight fighter in UFC. Buzz Bissinger, Pat Sajak. Name. Yeah, there you go. Bobby Valentine, Marcellus Wiley. Yeah, Dan Rather was the best. I wasted it. <laughs> I already gave it away. But... Gave it away. You can still, if you subscribe, <clears throat> go back many, and see all the previous. How many listeners do you have? How 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 much do you think the Fan Lebitard podcast will move the needle on Mark Hockman's super follows? Like a good two or three. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, Hawk. Here's the thing you need to know about Nathan is that he's a goddamn maniac. And when challenged with something, he will go above and beyond to accomplish it. Yeah. You know, Nathan, I was listening to probably my favorite metal art podcast, Cinephobe, and they were talking about, uh, you know, this person who's going to Apple stores and leaving reviews on all the devices and weaving this intricate narrative. And that sounds an awful lot like something you did for that podcast in their quest to get to 20,000 reviews because you're a lunatic. I, I do do things like that are, is that how is that your personality like are you are you super driven hawk let me tell yeah. you all you need to know about this man he listens to podcasts at three and a half times speed oh my god uh, yeah i didn't even know that was available Gotta, <laughs> i didn't either until this year and now yeah i've i've bumped up my 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 comfort level 2.5 if we've got I kind of feel of like, and I, I don't really listen to podcasts. There's a couple I'll listen to every now and then, only if like I'm out walking with my wife. I don't feel like talking to her, um, but I'm not a podcast <laughs> guy. I don't, but I, I've listened to, I like uh, David Spade a lot. And so I listen mm-hmm. to this fly on the wall. It's him and Dana Carvey and they uh, interview people from SNL. 
And then uh, I started listening to Conan O'Brien a little bit. And there was one other, it was like an office podcast um, with, uh, what's the dude's name? The, the Kevin. Um, so I listened to some episodes of that, but I kind of feel like if you're listening to a podcast at more than regular speed, then you're just doing it as a chore. Like you're not really trying to enjoy it or absorb it. You're just, you know how like some people, they have 18 things on their DVR or 128 things on their DVR. So they just start half watching it. They're on Twitter, whatever. They keep it on because they just want to check off the box. Like, oh, I got through it. I got through it. And I kind of feel like if you're listening to podcasts at three and a half times speed, <laughs> you're not really absorbing anything. You're just trying to check off the box. I mean, my favorite segment from the Levitard show is Weekend Observation. I mean, it's a great segment. So it's there's a lot of joy there. I'm definitely not checking off any boxes listening at such a fast speed. And I, I retain so much. The beeps, um, love the beeps that happen, you know. So uh, actually, there is some truth to that because I did um, a couple months ago clear out some podcasts that, I thought about it and I'm like, I only listen to these exclusively at like 3.5. Um, so I was like, just to say you got through them, I'm, right? Yeah. If I'm, yeah, it was time for you to be honest with yourself. Exactly. So awesome. I'm, I did slow down some. Probably a good lesson for your fourth graders. This is, yeah. this is wisdom yes. that you can wow. impart on your students. Should play this episode for them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you really you should. should. <laughs> I'm glad should we're see if anybody want to become hawkamaniacs. <laughs> So Hawk, if you don't listen to podcasts anymore, really outside of the the few sparing ones, then do you do you keep up to date with any of the Levitard folks outside of like their personal life? Do you still listen to any of their stuff? Or? I, I don't. I stopped listening to the show uh, literally the day that I left. I, I never listened to another show again, only because it would uh, it would play on so many different emotions. If I heard something that I wanted to participate in and I wasn't there, then that would bum me out. Or if I heard something that annoyed me or, I, you know what I mean? Like would always be thinking along the same lines. So I'll see clips on Twitter a lot if I see something getting retweeted over and over because I follow so many people that are, you know, part of the show. So if I see something retweeted over and over, then I'll watch that clip. Um, other than that, no, I, I I don't. I'm friends with a lot of guys from the show, and and you know, and and we'll talk about stuff if something happened that's you know like super whatever. But uh, no, I don't, I don't, I, I don't listen to it. It would, I, I think, it would be uh, uh, an exercise in something. So here and now, we can exclaim that ha hashtag Hawk to the Lark will not get off the ground. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay, all right. I'd be happy to have them. Uh, guy. I would like to host, uh, you know, like uh, douche or no douche, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, memories or, or whatever it is. No, I, I'm, I'm friends with all those guys. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and, but I, I, I would, I, I, in all honesty, would I go back there? No, I, I'm, that, that's like, uh, that's 10 years. It's over. I think it's 10 years. I think it's longer than 10 years. More mm -hmm. than 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Hawkamaniacs, <clears throat> no. You see Roy regularly. You see Chris Whittingham regularly. And Hawkamaniacs, no. So, Ty, if you had the chance to like get free tickets to a Panthers game, like how much do you think it would cost just to get like the opportunity for free tickets? Like, or how much would you be willing to pay? for just the opportunity to get like free tickets to local Miami sporting events. Gosh, well, I do have so many ties to local Miami sporting yeah. events and teams that it's, it's a, it's a tantalizing offer. You know, a um, one way ticket from Miami was only $70 for me going back from Moss Miami. Unfortunately, I slept through that you flight. You flew in then, for Moss Miami? And then I, I did. I slept, through my, I slept <laughs> through my insane. flight home, though. Show them the sticker. Show them the banner that you had made. Oh, the banner? I don't. I won't be able to get that stuff like quickly. The fan Levitar show had representation at Moss. Yeah, I, we had a good I made a banner. I made stickers. What does your wife think that you had to fly somewhere for a radio show? You know, Not even somewhere. Across the country. It's a great question. Uh, I thought my 
my wife is incredibly supportive as you can tell. I couldn't I couldn't do anything that I do with this podcast without her support. I'm more like what do uh the other like my parents or those that hear like you know, wait, you go like, you know, trying to explain to my parents, yeah, I'm going to this podcast I listen to throws a party and I'm I'm going So did you go it. did you go there alone? I did. Yeah. And then did you meet people that, mm-hmm. that like, I actually, you? yeah. So I got a, I got like a VIP thing and then I tweeted something out and I, I hooked up some uh, fans. I got them into the VIP section for a little bit cheaper than it would have actually cost. So I met some people that way because our Ty and Brian weren't able to go. So, hmm. you know, growing the show by giving it's VIP discounts. No, it's a testament to the, uh, community that they've built that's gonna be a good that's gonna be a good goal uh, that's gonna be a good goal for the panthers by the way what's it gonna take to get you out to some highline matches (laughs) for chris cody's team i think i think once again the the 10 year uh rule i think my highlight days are uh i root for his team uh but i think my highlight days are are come have come and gone Hawk, I don't know if you know what podcast you're on. This is not also. This is not only the Fan Levitard Show. The this fastest also- growing Dan Levitard Show YouTube <laughs> channel. Don't forget this about that. The, this is also the fastest growing podcast about the fastest sport in the world. God bless Highlight. Oh, I, I've seen uh, you guys promote that podcast. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, I'm a so big listen, fan of the sport. We are. We're in the works. We are going to somehow get all three of us together. Not not you necessarily, Hawk, but like the three typical fan levitard hosts. Well, not when you say not necessarily. I can I can I can say definitively. <laughs> well, no, no, it will not include you know, me. Don't poo poo it just yet. You know, we, <laughs> listen. I'm making this offer to you now. You're going to reject it. This is how this relationship has traditionally right. gone. Nathan okay. is going to pitch it to you about a year later, and you will accept <laughs> for him because you clearly like him more, and that's okay. I am not sensitive. I'm not upset about that at all. So listen, when the four of us get together out at Dania Highlight, we're going to have some beers. We're going to have, um, we're going to have a good time. We're going to pal around with Chris Cody, all the guys. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And, Wouldn't uh, this we'll be have- a Magic City tie? <laughs> oh yeah, Magic City. I'm sorry. Yeah. Magic City Although High. they're bringing Highlight back over there at Dania. Well done. And um, you know, it's going to be a good time, Hawk. So you ruminate on it. Just, just keep it in the back of your brain. All right, I'll, I'll marry When Nathan proposes I'll it for like season five of God Bless Highline, right. you'll DM be ready. Me. DM me. We'll get you like five more super follows for that. <laughs> five least. more Hawkamaniacs for They'll sure. They'll all be Nathan right. just from different accounts. Fair enough. Ty, um, how- Does this how podcast from... have a time limit at some point? Does the tape no, run no, out? No, no, no. Were... Is there- I mean, no, it's going to keep going, Hawk. All right. Because I did going. four hours of radio today already. I mean, Preparing we're we three hours three. into this. <laughs> Jesus I think Christ. the last question here. Oh, thank Ty, you. How, how much would you pay to find out about like new products that you've <laughs> never heard of before? Oh, man. Like, I mean, new, pro- new, products, new products are cool. What did, like, what did, what did I do? What did I do for super followers? It mean, was a new product. Do you, At least 300? Do you know, yeah. Do you know that there's a Swedish fish? energy drink that sounds disgusting. like how much would you pay to see someone drink that, that for the first time very and get their good oh honest God. opinion on it and then that you find out very good ty that yes wow. it's very good or did you know that they're putting nitro in pepsi vanillas now i thought nitro was just a coffee and beer thing but apparently it's a soda thing too and i know that because i'm a hawkamaniac and for 2.99 a month i get introduced to new and old products like oyster blenders how's the blender by the way <laughs> I love that you know the brand name. Yes, it's very, <laughs> it's very my good. My parents I mean, had one. Yes, I my I remembered us, I uh, smoothies today on the Oster Blender. Wow, it's so it survived the smoke. It did. It did. That's We're still using know. it. Yeah. Although, listeners, I want you, if you have, if you're not a Hawkamaniac, I want you guys to preemptively subscribe in case that blender kicks out. It's on. <laughs> I've been praying for it because yeah. I know since the smoke, I've been concerned because I know the smoothies very ripping. electrical smell, you know, when you, yeah. you have like the, the burning wires or something inside. So I'd like five, six listeners to, to become a Hawkamaniac for the next couple months. How so. does one become a super follower? They may ask. 
Yeah, I mean, you go to your Twitter handle, <laughs> that, right? Which right. is at Mark Hawkman. That is such Mark a great call, Nathan. That is such wow. a great call. <laughs> and you're gonna I mean, see yes. this. You're gonna that see is... this pink button. Well, unless Elon Musk has already changed that up, and mm. I think it's now subscribe. Yeah, it doesn't say super follow anymore, from what I understand. I believe you're going to subscribe to that now, but you're a Hawkamaniac. If you've enjoyed this as a Hawkamaniac, you need five or six of you to, for like the next couple months, help build out Mark's Blender slush fund in case, Just in case. disaster strikes. You know, it, it's going strong, but we're concerned here at the Fan Levitard, the fastest growing Dan Levitard show fan YouTube channel about the blender and i want to make sure that in case something happens you're taking care of i appreciate that it's very nice i mean there's probably that new oh. blender is one round trip ticket probably yeah. from los angeles to <laughs> if South i hadn't Florida slept for... in if i hadn't <laughs> slept in you know Nate, that reminds me i never i never got the final tally how much money did you end up uh i guess <laughs> consuming at the at the bar or lobby oh or whatever actually that was while you waited I drank one beer the whole night. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. Miami? Oh, wait. You're talking. Okay. So, actually, no. about after you missed your flight. Oh, I, see what I you're saw saying. that on Twitter. Yeah. I saw that on Twitter. Or maybe yeah. uh, we were corresponding at that point, but you, you yeah, spent you, the entire you day at the I airport. Did. Eight hours. You know, I didn't get there. I had like six or seven plates of food. And I, which airport? I only, Miami? Uh, Fort Lauderdale Fort at Lauderdale. the American Express Escape. I was like, well, I guess my plan is to try to make up $400 worth of free liquor and food. And I probably got when you say the American Express escape. Are you talking about the Mm -hmm. Centurion Lounge? Well, in Fort Lauderdale, it's not a Centurion Lounge. It's It's just an it's just an escape. It's actually a very nice escape, though. Um, I've been what's the other escape I've been at in like Sacramento, the Sacramento escape. Soup. It feels like a closet compared mm. to this one. Very nice escape. I did feel good about what I uh, made up, but a uh, quick tally. I would have to say I probably got to like 180, maybe low 200s of food and various things. So I didn't get to 400. I would have, you know, I had to, I had to drive back. So I had to you know, I, I spaced out my drink, so I still made it onto the plane feeling fine. It's a long but delay. It was, yeah, it was. I was grateful to get in there, but thank you, Mark, for your time today. It's been it's been a pleasure. A very emotional end. <laughs> can we can we Nathan, can we hit him with a thank you, Hawk, real quick? I thank think so. you, Hawk. Thank, thank you, you, Hawk. Hawk. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank what does this come hot. from? Is this, an, this is, is this like a fan Levitard podcast thing? This is a Dan Levitard thing, but you don't listen, so you mm. wouldn't know that. Anyway, Mark Hockman, Miami radio legend, gracing our airwaves. I mean, Mark, did we have fun or what? Oh, we, we did. love to have fun here on the fan Levitard show. I'm going to get a bag of munchos tomorrow. If you don't, uh, it's all over. In fact, if you don't put it on <laughs> Twitter. Uh, is Munchos in Lancaster, California? I don't know. Yeah, can you get this at like a yeah. Publix or? I get them at Publix. Okay, they're perfect. they're around. I've definitely seen them. Then yeah, I'm gonna go. I've got a Publix next door. I'm gonna go get some tomorrow, and we're gonna do. Uh, you have a Publix in Virginia? Munchos. Yeah. Hmm. We're sophisticated up here. I no we're idea. not the South, but we're not the North. What what shirt are you wearing there? What's uh... oh the Hokies? Gobble gobble. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Frank Beamer. Yep, yeah, Beamer. Yeah. It was a Stu Gatz type thing. <laughs> Blurred out Frank Beamer. It's all, it's all the knowledge you need. Are we, uh, are we done? Is that it? Um, I guess. If How you, do I if rank? You want, it, uh, say you want it to be done. Yeah, I'm pretty done. Yeah. Uh, did, did, <laughs> how do I rank amongst other fan Levitard podcast guests? Um, I'd, you're up there. I mean, in my opinion, you're a big git. At least no, 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 no. My performance, not the, I, at, the, the performance. At least top 20. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Who else has been on this podcast? Oh, God. Let me go through the roll of ducks. I mean, we've, I think everybody except for Dan and Stu. From oh, really? Show, yeah. everybody else? Hmm. We've had, mm-hmm. um, 
we've had Zach Harper, we've had um, David Sampson, we've had all the main cast minus um, Dan Stu, like he said. Um, who else we've had? We've had a lot of the Lauer people from like the very early stuff. We had Mike Fuentes on last week. Uh, we've had Jeremy Taché on. We had Bimmel on. Who? Um, I actually, of- I actually got a free month of LinkedIn Premium just so I could scroll Meadowlark's listed employees <laughs> and use my five <laughs> premium messages. That's how we got Bimmel on the show. I don't know who Bimmel is. Yeah, he's their COO of Meadowlark. Oh, so I don't know who that was. We had Britney yeah. Spears on the show. I forgot about that. That was cool. That's not possible. Uh, episode 44, the Stop the Shave Rally. She came in live to support Mike Ryan. What? What? <laughs> what am I missing? What? You, you know, you'll have to listen to find out. But... All right. That's a two-time speed episode right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a... <laughs> no. Now you've gone too far. There have been eight goals in this Panthers game in two periods so far. They're still sounds like a Panthers game. I wish I had the over. Mm. Right, well, thanks yeah. for joining us. Yeah, thanks, man. Really appreciate it. I had fun. Sorry for keeping you so long. <laughs> oh, it was nothing. <laughs> All right, have a good one, Hawk. An old sitcom, uh, old sitcom take. Is that it? Yeah, That's we're it. done. You're we're done. Go. Well, it was not a pleasure meeting you guys. Glad you got well. to update your computer, by the way. So <laughs> yes. that is something you're welcome. Right. I really, if, if, yeah. if nothing else came you out know? of it, I had been avoiding that for there years. There you go. That happens to me all the time, too. Now you're set for 2023. <laughs> so there you go. You're welcome. All right. Tell uh, Ruffles guys that hi and I missed them. Will do. All right. See you guys. All right. See, see ya. ya.